the mystery man from Torred. Back in the month of July in 1954, Japanese officials at the Tokyo airport seemed to have a problem identifying the country of origin for a man that was ready to board the plane back for Europe. On his verified passport was the country of Torred that had no signs for a forged document. After sitting down with the man and questioning who he was and where he was going, he became increasingly annoyed as to why he was being held. They later revealed to him the problem with trying to find his country of origin of which didn't exist. After arguing with them to show the country on the map, they gathered several different world maps for him to use as evidence of his country's existence. As he pored over the map, pointing in the general direction near France and other areas, he realized that his country wasn't anywhere to be found. He became increasingly disturbed by this and told the officials that his country has been around for more than 1,000 years and that it didn't make sense. When they asked for him to confirm his identity, he gave the name of his company as well as the company he was visiting in Tokyo on a business meeting that had been scheduled ahead of time. The officials then called the Japanese company, but they quickly denied ever having heard of the man or of having any meeting scheduled. Additionally, they could find no evidence of the man's company whatsoever that seemed to not exist. This ended with the officials renting a hotel room for him to stay at with several guards watching him as they were unsure as to what to do with him. When he laid down to fall asleep, he disappeared and was never seen again. Ancient Astronaut Carving on Rock Though ancient alien enthusiasts refer to the find as evidence of advanced ancient alien civilizations, many amongst the time travel fringe groups argue that the same evidence can be used to back up the claim of time traveling humans visiting the ancient past. One such piece is that of the ancient stone figure found in the middle of a number of ancient Mayan ruins down in Guatemala that features an almost perfect recreation of a modern day astronaut carved in stone. This stone figure has been at the center of many ancient alien debates, claiming that the gods were depicted in such a way due to the fact that they were merely alien creatures visiting from faraway planets and required a complex breathing apparatus to survive on our atmosphere. Interestingly enough, however, time travel enthusiasts argue that it is evidence of future humans having visited the past given how it resembles the specific designs of modern day astronaut gear. This, coupled with the argument that an alien species could very well not require or even have a number of different space suit designs, helped to hold the argument that the carved stone must be that of a human being having traveled through the past in modern day astronaut-like gear. Additionally, many time travel fringe groups argue that for one to travel through time, it must also require the participant to travel through space as a single day in the future is several million miles away as the Earth the Sun and our collective solar system moves through space. This means that if a human from the future was to visit humans in the past, they would overwhelmingly require astronaut equipment just to survive the journey. The Pyramid of Gaius Cestius Among the list of ancient structures built across Rome is that of the Pyramid of Gaius Cestius. According to the inscriptions of the pyramids and the historians of the time, the pyramid was the supposed burial grounds of Gaius Cestius constructed back in 30 BC. A Roman member of the Epulones religious corporation and a huge fan of the constructed Nubian style pyramids found throughout Egypt, though recent findings in ancient books argue otherwise. It has been discovered that the pyramid of Cestius was originally one of two pyramids that stood at the heart of Rome a strange site of construction that many scholars found perplexing. The legends surrounding the pyramids referred to them as the Pyramid of Romulus and the Pyramid of Remus. According to scholars, Romulus and Remus were the long-believed fictitious characters that founded the city of Rome after having been abandoned and raised by wolves in the wild. Romulus and Remus were believed to be twin brothers that would later go on to be seen as the founders of the city of Rome and the Roman kingdom of Romulus after the twins had battled and the boy, Remus, was struck down by Romulus, killing him instantly. 
It was then believed that Romulus constructed the pyramid for his brother that, now referred to as the Pyramid of Gaius Cestius, that would become the heart of the new Roman city. Accounts discovered by scholars in the 16th century detail that there were once two pyramids, including a much larger pyramid alongside the Pyramid of Cestius, that was deconstructed to be used for other construction projects, referred to as the Pyramid of Romulus. This could very well mean that these pyramids, though now gone or misnamed, could be the evidence of proof of the legend of Rome and its founders from millennia in the past. The Mystery of the Rendlesham Forest Back in December of 1980, located near the outskirts of Rendlesham Forest, a wooded area located in Suffolk, England, there was a series of reports made by credible witnesses that detailed the event of an unidentified flying object that had reportedly landed in the forest and was at the centre of a number of unexplainable phenomena throughout the area. These witness reports would include sworn affidavits from multiple military officers in high positions and untold chaos for the coming years. At around 3am on December 26, a security patrol at the Royal Air Base, Woodbridge, saw what they described as bright lights descending nearby the Rendlesham Forest. The security patrol described the lights as that of a downed aircraft and so then quickly rushed to investigate their sighting, working to follow its general direction in the forest. Once they arrived within sight of the aircraft, the group of men took notice of the fact that the animals nearby, native to that region of the forest, appeared to be screeching and going into a panicked frenzy. The men described what they saw as a glowing object, metallic in appearance, surrounded with attached and brightly coloured lights. One of the members of the security patrol, Sergeant Jim Penniston, later wrote in his memo that the team had encountered a craft of unknown origin, which only helped to confirm the sighting of an unidentified flying craft. Additional evidence was gathered the next day by a high military official known as Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt, of whom found spiked radiation readings at the supposed site of the landed craft within Rendlesham Forest, as well as a triangle of depression that sank within the grounds as if a large object with a massive pressing force had recently been resting on that region. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Holt would later be punished and reprimanded for creating witness reports, sworn affidavits, and going on record to say that he had believed the event to be extraterrestrial in nature and that the incident had been covered up by both the governments of the United Kingdom and the United States. The Megalania Believed by mainstream research resources as an extinct megafauna, many people have claimed to have come into direct contact and encountered the Megalania in the modern day. The Megalania was that of a giant lizard that was believed to have inhabited the region of Australia during the Pleistocene era, of which ended roughly 11,700 years ago. Despite this supposed extinction time, references and drawings of the creature have existed all throughout Aboriginal myth that have referred to the creature as the Baby Snatcher. Additionally, encounters of this creature have been made in the modern day. Back in 1979, a farmer in Maroya reported to author and cryptozoologist Rex Gilroy a sighting of a 20-foot-long lizard that left behind tracks all throughout the region. These tracks were later made into plaster moulds that seemed to match that of ancient Megalania discoveries. Since this original sighting, many other tracks have been discovered near a forest trail roughly 185 miles from Maroya. Though many scientists believe that for the species of Megalania to survive, it would require a large breeding population, recent scientific discoveries show that this might not be the case. The evolutionary cousin of the Megalania, the Komodo dragon, possess a strange ability in which females can generate offspring of all males despite not having male seed to fertilize their eggs. Though this only works for one generation, as all offsprings turn out male, it does mean that the breeding population can be much smaller than originally theorised and give credence to the existence of the Megalania in Australia. <laughs>